Hello there Pixies! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you love Harry Potter videos then please don't forget to subscribe, click that red button down there and click the notification bell next to it so that you can become one of the notification squad and never miss a video. Today I want to talk about something that is very close to my heart Anyone who knows me knows that I am a musician and also an avid fan of very many different types of music. And so today I wanted to take a look at my top five film score pieces in the Harry Potter series. Also there is an extra sixth bonus track so if you want to see that then don't forget to watch to the end. Watch all the way to the end. Number one would have to be Hedwig's theme. I mean, it's pretty obvious that that piece of music is not just one of the many pieces of music in this film. That piece of music is basically the heart of the entire franchise. Just as Hogwarts is the heart of the books and everybody loves Hogwarts, one of the main special and most magical things about these films is Hedwig's theme. You know, you hear the do 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 And that's like your entire childhood just summed up in like a few notes. I mean, not for everyone, but for me, it's iconic. It gives me chills. And when I heard it again for the first time in a few years, when the first Fantastic Beasts film came out and the trailer was out and that tiny little hint of it, it just made me emotional because it's so iconic. It's not just Hedwig's theme anymore. It's like a brand. It's part of the brand. It's part of the brand and they were smart to keep that a, a running theme throughout the entire film series. The second track on my list is A Window to the Past. That's also a John Williams track and it's just... It makes me emotional every time because that piece of music has so many different emotions in it, but to me, what it really symbolises is the entire premise of Prisoner of Azkaban is Harry feeling like he's longing, absolutely longing, to know more about his parents and his past, and the absolute aching longing that he feels to know more about them and to avenge them when he thinks Sirius killed them is just completely summed up in that one piece of music. It's even called A Window to the Past, so that song's really special to me and for, for a great number of reasons, but it just makes me emotional every time I hear it, so A Window to the Past has to be on that list. My third track on the list, again, is another John Williams track. I'm, I'm sorry to all the other composers, you're all wonderful, but there's something about John Williams soundtracks that just... wow. But it is Forks the Phoenix, that is my third track on this list. It's so full of hope, full of joy, full of magic, like it's so soaring, it's like a bird flying like Forks. And yet, there's something really mournful about it and it, it makes me want to cry and I'm welling up now just thinking of this song. Um, yeah, it, it's magical. It's everything that Harry probably feels about the Wizarding World. I mean, sure, the Wizarding World is magical and wonderful, especially when you're 12, but he also sees that it's mournful and people could die. This is really the first time that someone he cared about and was invested in almost died when it came to Ginny in the Chamber of Secrets. And so he's finally realizing there is a very serious consequence to this magic. Number four on my list, is Neville's Waltz by Patrick Doyle from The Goblet of Fire. This piece of music, it was between this one and Harry in Winter, but for me, Neville's Waltz is just more whimsical and it's nice to have a theme that's dedicated to Neville Longbottom because he needs more love. Neville always needs more love. And it's just so playful and reminds me instantly of the Yule Ball and the crazy things that happen there and, and all the drama and all the fun and comedy. Yeah, Neville's Waltz is just special. Number five on my list is Obliviate by Alexandre Desplat from The Deathly Hallows part one, I believe. And it just 
really hit me when I heard that and saw Hermione obliviating her parents. It was so devastating and it's such a beautiful piece of music that it's a slow burn, you know. It just leads up to that crescendo, but it's so emotional. At the start it's very dark and mournful, and then it gets even more mournful, but it's a little more upbeat and, well not upbeat, it just, the, the tension rises and falls and rises and falls and so you go on an emotional journey with the characters who are leaving everything they ever knew. For Harry it's a good thing, but for Ron and Hermione, they're leaving their family, the people that they love and I think that, that piece of music sums that up perfectly and it's one of my favourites. And I did say that there will be a bonus sixth track, so that is The Chamber of Secrets from The Chamber of Secrets by John Williams. <sighs> this piece of music is incredible. It starts off really sort of dark and moody and you get a sense of what the chamber is like and kind of what Tom Riddle is like because though it's dark and moody, there's something very magical and seductive about the way that it builds up to the crescendo at the end and the drama of the battle but it's quite seductive, just as Tom Riddle is seductive, it's hypnotic, it makes you want to listen to every phrase that it says and that he says and it really, it's just, it just pulls you in, just as Tom Riddle can pull anyone in. With that face, who couldn't? <laughs> but that is my final track, I just adore it and I can listen to it over and over again, it's just so hypnotic. Ugh. Yes, Chamber of Secrets every day. What are your top three tracks from the Harry Potter series that you like best? Let me know in the comments and we can start a conversation about it. If you did like this video, don't forget to share, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more Harry Potter videos every week. Thanks for watching guys, bye.